What do polar icebreakers, which operate in the Arctic and Antarctica, have to do with the Suez Canal in Egypt? Well, when in March 2021, a giant 250,000-ton container ship named Ever Given blocked the Suez Canal for six days and brought global trade to a halt, attention was shifted to Russia. Not because they had any involvement in that incident, but because Russia has been developing a new trade route between Europe and Asia, which runs through the Arctic Ocean. And it only takes half the time to sail through it from China to the UK compared to sailing through the Suez Canal. To control this Arctic route, Russia now operates more than 55 icebreakers and is building more, while the US government has only two icebreakers. But why the US government needs to secure the polar regions, how the world's most powerful privately owned icebreaker almost joined the US fleet, why the icebreaker gap is real and yet not that big of a deal to the United States, and why even if Americans had 10 polar icebreakers tomorrow, they would still have nowhere to go, is not what you think. In August 2020, the Russian Navy conducted its largest war game exercise since the Cold War in the Bering Sea near Alaska. The thing is, this exercise extended into the US exclusive economic zone. American commercial fishing vessels were shocked to see Russian warships there and were ordered to leave the area. You could say the US military was not present to defend their economic zone. But let's face it, it's not like icebreakers would have somehow prevented the Russian fleet from kicking out the fishing vessels. Icebreakers are not equipped to engage in military operations of the sort. Their main mission is to break ice. The thing is, the icebreaker gap can be explained fairly easily. According to the Arctic Institute, Russia has about 15,000 miles of coastlines and 2 million inhabitants in the Arctic. Compare that to only 2,500 miles of Arctic shoreline and only 68,000 people living in the Alaskan Arctic. Plus, the Russian economy has much more reliance on oil and natural gas, including from the Arctic. Whereas for the United States, oil and gas extraction, even including the non-Arctic portion, makes up a small percentage of the US economy. Russia also sees the Northern Sea Route as an important trade route, given that it's located in its backyard. All these reasons might explain why Russia needs more icebreakers than the US does. At the same time, that doesn't mean that only two icebreakers can provide the required capability for the United States, especially that one of them is almost 50 years old. The US Coast Guard is dealing with a crisis of its own. In 2006, the US Coast Guard cutter Polar Star reached the end of her 30-year service life and the Coast Guard placed her into reserve in Seattle. Two years later, her sister ship Polar Sea was also reaching her end of life, and the Coast Guard could only reliably use her for so much longer. That was until 2010, when the powerful engines on the Polar Sea suffered major failures. Further inspection confirmed that on five out of six main diesel engines, the pistons had got welded and stuck inside the engine sleeves. With both American polar icebreakers out of service, the US Coast Guard was at a crisis point. That's because each year, a heavy icebreaker is required to navigate and break through miles of ice to allow fuel and supply ships to reach McMurdo Station in Antarctica, where a variety of scientific research is done. This annual icebreaking endeavor falls under Operation Deep Freeze. In the absence of both polar icebreakers, the Swedish icebreaker Odin was slated to help with the annual icebreaking mission. But then, the Swedish Maritime Administration announced that the nation's most powerful icebreaker was badly needed in the Baltic Sea during the Northern Hemisphere winter. So the National Science Foundation, which is funded by the US federal government, had to call up an old friend, Russia. This is how the Canadian-built but Russian-owned icebreaker Vladimir Ignatuk was contracted for a price tag of $11.5 million to help break the ice in 2012. She was also contracted to help the year after. At the time, a new heavy icebreaker would have cost about $900 million to build and 8 to 10 years to deliver. So the Coast Guard decided to spend $57 million to extend Polar Star's service life by about 10 years, and Polar Star was back in operation in late 2013. 
but the US needed a long-term plan, which involved procuring new icebreakers. In 2018, Halter Marine won the $1.9 billion contract to make America's two new polar security cutters, with an option to build a third one. The first vessel was planned to be delivered in 2024, but this was pushed back to 2027 or so due to design delays and bankruptcy. That's right, in November of 2022, Halter Marine, which had been losing millions of dollars, was sold by its parent company to Bollinger Shipyards. With the launch of the new polar cutters being delayed, the US Coast Guard was forced to give Polar Star yet another extensive $76.2 million service life extension. Because she is the only heavy polar icebreaker in service, the overhaul was spread over five years so that Polar Star could fulfill its commitments in the icebreaking operations during winter and then dock for maintenance and upgrades in spring. Polar Star is currently the single point of failure when it comes to US polar icebreaking missions. But the US Coast Guard does have another icebreaker in service that's even bigger than Polar Star. So how come they don't use her to cover for Polar Star? Even though US CGC Healy has a displacement of 16,000 tons compared to Polar Star's 13,000 tons, Healy is categorized as a medium icebreaker, whereas Polar Star is considered a heavy icebreaker. The reason for this is that Healy is a research icebreaker that supports scientific research in polar regions. Its larger size is primarily to accommodate scientific equipment and laboratories that it has on board. It's designed to break ice up to 4.5 feet thick continuously while moving at 3 knots, or break ice that is 10 feet thick when backing and ramming. Compare that to Polar Star's main mission, which is to maintain access to research stations, resupply them, and support other vessels. No wonder it can break through ice up to 21 feet thick by backing and ramming, and continuously break through 6 feet of ice while steaming ahead. This is why Polar Star is categorized as a heavy icebreaker and Healy is not. Long story short, the US Coast Guard needs another heavy polar icebreaker, and as of October 2023, it has two options. One is bad, and the other is not ideal. After Royal Dutch Shell stopped drilling for oil in the Arctic, the world's most powerful privately owned icebreaker became available on the market. IVIC is a 360-foot ice-capable offshore supply vessel and anchor handling tug. It's primarily used for towing and laying anchors for drilling rigs. In 2015, IVIC's owner pitched the vessel to the US Coast Guard as a suitable icebreaker. The Coast Guard was like, f*** off, this is no good for the military. But fast forward through a few years of troubles and delays for the Coast Guard, like that bankruptcy that we mentioned earlier, and sweet desperation kicked in to the extent that the fiscal year 2023 budget actually included money to buy the IVIC, although Congress removed it at the last minute. And I think that's because there is another option, bringing back the Polar Sea. It would cost $150 million to purchase IVIC. On the other hand, revitalizing the Polar Sea, which is quite a capable icebreaker, would cost about $250 million. The thing is, much more money needs to be spent to bring IVIC up to the US Coast Guard standards, and even then, she may not be sufficient for the job. IVIC can supposedly break 3.3 feet of ice at 5 knots, which is even less than what the medium icebreaker Healy can do. But even that claim was never proven in ice trials, in the fears of failing to meet the Coast Guard standards. Plus, IVIC has a helicopter pad but no helicopter hangar. So why isn't Polar Sea the obvious choice? As mentioned earlier, Polar Sea suffered disastrous engine failures, to the extent that in 2017, she was left to be used as a parts donor for Polar Star. It's not that just parts of the Polar Sea's engine need to be replaced. The complete engine block has to come out before the new engine block can go in. And there's no easy way to do this. Well, except for cutting the side of the hull open, which is a major undertaking, but it's not impossible. In fact, this operation has already been done on another US Coast Guard cutter, Healy. On August 18, 2020, 
Healy suffered an electrical fire of unknown cause, which destroyed one of the two propulsion motors and shaft. She had to go into dry dock, where the ship's dual hulls were cut out from both the outside and the inside of the ship. The cut-out part of the hull was then carefully removed with the help of a crane. This opening allowed for the old propulsion motor to be rolled out on rails and removed. The new motor was then brought in and put in place. This was a major operation which took about one month to complete. We should note that Fairbanks Morse Defense, the manufacturer of Polar Seas engines, still makes and supports that type of engine, so they could manufacture them if needed. Which means it is possible to bring Polar Sea back to life. It's just not ideal. The irony is that regardless of going with IVIC or Polar Sea, even if the Coast Guard could immediately receive its new three Polar security cutters that are on order, those ships might have to sit in port because there is a shortage of qualified officers to pilot them. The US Coast Guard is still facing a recruiting and retention challenge. To put things in perspective, in 2020, the Coast Guard offered a $40,000 incentive to qualified candidates willing to fill lieutenant and lieutenant commander, department head, and executive officer positions. Guess how many people showed interest? Zero. The Coast Guard had to lower the eligibility requirements to attract applicants. The 2020 hearing of the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation states that Russia intends to fully control the northern sea route, and President Putin's government has even threatened to sink foreign vessels that do not have a Russian pilot on board or a Russian escort vessel. Icebreakers are necessary to access polar areas and are an important element of the Arctic sovereignty for the U.S. However, the number of icebreakers that other countries possess doesn't affect the numbers that the United States needs in order to support its polar scientific efforts or to provide access to its exclusive economic zone. That said, Americans do require additional icebreakers to augment the Coast Guard's law enforcement, search and rescue, disaster response, and scientific support missions. But maybe even more importantly, the personnel to operate those icebreakers. I'm just not sure which one is more difficult to address. What are your thoughts? Just leave us a comment. There is no need to break the ice. <laughs>